All right, so here it is almost four years after the release of the original A1, the A1 Mark II. And you see, I have attached the 2870 F2 G Master lens that was also just announced. There's another video on my channel about that. But in this video, we're going to talk about the A1 Mark II. I tried it in different scenarios. Uh, I'm a landscape photographer, so obviously shot a bunch of landscapes with it, macro, but also wildlife to test the speed, the autofocus and all that kind of stuff. Also did some video, so lots of stuff to talk about. So let's get started. All right, so before we get started, here is my new coffee table book, The Beauty of the Netherlands, that was just released. And if you don't have it yet, check out beautyofthenetherlands.com. It has 10 years of my best photos from the Netherlands in this new book. So if you like my work or if you like the Netherlands, definitely check that out. Let me put it right there. But uh, all right, on to the A1 Mark II. So first things first, it has a similar sensor or actually the same sensor as the original A1, 50 megapixels. So they didn't change that. It's kind of the same as my A7R5 that got upgraded from the A7R4, the same sensor, same sim very similar image quality, I should say, because it has better color rendition also at higher ISOs. Um, but the sensor is the same, but it's packed with all kinds of new features that you can find in all of the newest Sony camera bodies. So the A1, obviously, the flagship camera, uh, the one camera that combines all the cameras of the lineup and, and basically has the best in it. Uh, so you can see when we look at the design, uh, the body is almost the same as the A9 III. Okay, so the grip is very good. It feels very beefy. You know, back in the days, people would say Sony feels like a toy camera. This one really doesn't. Uh, it, it feels beefy, it feels strong. Also the eyepiece, it's a big eyepiece. And uh, yeah, it, it, it feels very good in the hand. Okay, when we further look at the design, the top view here, uh, we have this uh, dials on the left. Uh, these two dials where we can control the shooting mode and the focus mode on the left side. And uh, well, the thing is, now we have the star, which you didn't have in the original A1, but the star also on the A9 Mark III. I usually put it on the star because I'm used to my A7R5 that does not have this dial. And by putting it on the star, I can control the camera the same way as my A7R5, which I find uh, convenient, but you can set it up obviously however you want. Uh, then obviously we have this uh, dedicated switch for photo and video. So you can completely um, uh, have different settings for video or choose which settings you want to take over from photo. You can all customize that, but I find it very handy. The video functions of this camera are also uh, great, uh, but we get more into that a little bit later. So design, uh, grip, body, the dials, uh, similar to the A93. And of course we have the very new well, new, that is also on my A7R5, but not on the original A1, the flip screen. The flip screen that you can flip all the way, you can like completely take it out. It's like, I call it the super flip screen. Uh, very nice for when you put the camera on the ground, low to the ground, also vertical. You can just flip it any way. You can, you can flip it uh, like this, like the original. You can flip it out, you can do like that. You can basically flip it in any direction and I cannot live anymore without it on my A7R5. So I'm very happy that it's also on the A1 Mark II. One more thing about the design is the port. So it now also has the Ethernet port. Basically, it has all the ports of the A9 III. If I am correct, let me open them all, but I'm just going to show you a picture on the screen of all the ports. But yeah, the LAN here, uh, all the other ports, which I don't use that much, but I am sure a lot of people in different industries can benefit from all this great connectivity. Yeah, that's kind of uh, the design. Let's move on to the, 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 the features and the stuff that I use a lot in the field. And I want to kind of take you through a journey of a few weeks that I had this camera um, that I shot with it and, and, and show you how I use it in my photography. So 
I used this camera for different scenarios in the few weeks that I had it. I used it in the forest. I shoot uh, beautiful landscapes with fog and mushrooms, close-ups with mushrooms. Uh, and of course, the new 2870 that was also announced today. You already see it all the time on this camera. Um, there's another video about that that I made. But uh, yeah, I did a lot of shots, obviously, with this lens as well. Um, and then I went into the city as well, the city of Amersfoort, my hometown, and uh, also did some kind of wildlife photography, but uh, more on that later. Let's get started with this, the, the first session uh, on, a, on an estate near my house with the beautiful autumn colors. Let, let me just show you some shots here on, on the computer. So we started out uh, in the dark kind of, so here we have a shot. 15 seconds exposure, starting on the tripod with this beautiful yellow trees, slowly walking into this uh, yeah, fairy tale world, I could say. And uh, walked a little bit further, came out and, and, and was greeted with this beautiful scene of this tree with autumn colors uh, in the fog and this little bridge here. I really liked this, this landscape here. Uh, still on the tripod, one second ISO 800. You see I'm shooting a little bit higher ISO, uh, simply because uh, the leaves are a little bit moving. So I want to keep the sh shutter speed a little bit short, even though it's uh, not really possible in the dark. However, it quickly got light and I saw this tree there on the left and I thought, okay, what if I stand in that tree? And here I want to talk about the, the first greatly improved feature of the camera, the image stabilization. Because the image stabilization, Sony says now it's 8.5 8 stops or something. I, I don't really know always what this number means. But uh, when I try it in the field, it works really great. So here I have a shot, ISO 3200, still that high ISO um, with a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second with the 1635 GM2. And, um, you see at 1 50th of a second, absolutely no problem. I can even go 1 10th of a second, sometimes even half a second with the image stabilization of this body. All right, so we continue to walk onto the bridge and here we saw this beautiful foggy forest. And of course, I, I used my tripod again here to, to, to frame this beautiful bridge here. And you see it's getting lighter. I'm using the ISO 200 here. Then I found this, this beautiful yellow leaf with a beautiful detail on it and it had these little raindrops uh, on them. So I, I, uh, I photographed this, this handheld at ISO uh, 640 here, 100 of a second F14 because I wanted most stuff sharp. Uh, and then I thought, okay, but what if I capture some more detail? So I had the macro lens in my bag, the 90 millimeter macro, I put that one on it. And uh, well, I did a focus stack because if I focused on the, um, the bubbles, the, not all the leaf uh, was sharp. So I wanted everything sharp. So this is another new function compared to the original A1 on this camera. The focus stacking is there, focus bracketing basically. So you set up uh, the, the closest point uh, and, and the camera takes shots at different focus points that you then later have to combine in, uh, in software to, to get an image that is very sharp from front to back. I also have a video about that on my channel that you can check out. It works exactly like the other Sony cameras that have focus bracketing. And then I continued to walk and I spotted some water with a lot of ducks, a lot of noise, and they were like spreading their wings. And uh, uh, I thought, okay, let's try to capture that. Uh, again, it was still a little bit dark, so I had to go a little bit high on the ISO. ISO 4000 to get a fast shutter speed to capture the movement of those leaves. So I, I put the 7200 on it um, and uh, higher ISO to, to capture that detail. So high ISO with this camera, absolutely no problem. ISO 4000 here. Uh, you can see this, this shot already uh, processed, but let's look uh, at the unprocessed shot. And then a crop, you can see here the noise. Uh, you can see here the duck with its, its wings out. Uh, there's not so much noise, uh, just simply apply some noise correction in, in Lightroom and all the noise uh, will be gone. So I have absolutely no problem with shooting uh, high ISO with this camera. All right, so some observations about this uh, first session. I can, you know, get to know the new camera, but it feels right at home compared to my a7r5 and my other sony bodies obviously i mean i'm a sony ambassador i have been using these cameras for uh, 10 years so 
of course, I feel right at home with the design. Uh, then, of course, yeah, focus stacking, focus bracketing. Thank you, Sony. Of course, needs to be in it. High ISO, great to use. And of course, the image stabilization. That was absolutely uh, great to see that uh, improved. So let's go on to the next uh, session here, uh, shooting some mushrooms near my house. We have this classic red and white mushrooms. Don't eat them. They are very uh, poisonous. But uh, I wanted to get some shots of that. So I, I brought the camera there. Uh, I started with uh, the 2870, again, wide open, beautiful bokeh, by the way, you can see a shot at F2, wide open, where I am getting very close to the ground. And for mushrooms, this is absolutely great. So for this shot, I used, of course, the flip out screen and put the camera like right on the ground, on the floor, uh, and use the camera like that. And I often do that with this mushroom shot. So for that, of course, great to have the new uh, tilt screen. Let's uh, see some other shots, all handheld shots, by the way, uh, because so close to the ground, I cannot use a tripod. So I put the camera on the ground. Here I saw one, a tiny one in between uh, some big ones, and I framed it also wide open here, uh, ISO 500. And then I saw a fly sitting on one of those mushrooms. And I thought, okay, what if I shoot the, that fly with my macro lens? So I stayed very quiet because obviously I wanted the fly to... to, 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 to keep sitting on that mushroom. I put on my macro lens and this is the first shot I took. And I took this handheld and what I do, I have a custom button set up. So here on the front of the camera, I have the AF on button. I put that one uh, focus magnify. So I press this one. Then I have a focus magnify with the cursor, the pointer in the middle where I can super precisely focus. And with the image stabilization, the, the shot is very, you know, it doesn't, doesn't, how to say, it doesn't shake a lot. So I can easily focus on the fly with that focus magnifier and even on the eye of the fly. So precise, so precise. So I focus on that and here's that shot of the, the fly on the mushroom handheld. And let me show you some, some other shots here. This one I really like because there were multiple layers of mushrooms behind. So higher ISO, but look at the shutter speed, 1 50th of a second and it's super sharp, okay, uh, handheld. I should have cranked up, you know, well, actually I was on F2.8, so my shutter speed was much faster, but you see here, I used F8 because I wanted the, the, the mushrooms in the back visible and not completely blurred out, okay? So let's look at the crop of this photo and look at this incredible detail. So the focus perfectly on the fly, amazing detail, uh, and here we really see that 50 megapixel uh, sensor shine, right? Amazing detail here in the fly. So luckily, it, it kept uh, sitting there for a while, so I could take the shot. So this was the, another session, and what I found out here is, again, the image stabilization is great, especially in combination with that focus magnifier. You can super precise uh, focus. This is how I shoot also with my A7R5 by the way, so I'm happy to, to see that. I think the image stabilization in this one is even better in, a, in my A7R5, but it's, it's close. And before we go to the city shoot, I want to show you one more epic shoot that I did near my house. I know there's a lot of beauty near my house of the famous Spulder Forest. You can also find it in my book, by the way, absolutely beautiful forest. Uh, let me start with some shots of just some normal shots of the forest to, to, to kind of show you the atmosphere before we dive in to the, you know, the, 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 the little bit more technical macro and uh, focus stacked mushroom shots. So here we have the Spilder Forest. You see the mood was absolutely incredible. I was walking around with the camera on my tripod. Uh, next one, ISO 200 on a tripod. You see all the time I'm, I'm using ISO 200. Why? I want to cut down the shutter speed because the leaves uh, can move a little bit. So I want a little bit faster shutter speed. So I'm always using a little bit higher ISO in the forest. Um, was absolutely magic atmosphere. Uh, then all those trees here. Um, and then I had uh, found this puddle with some, some beautiful reflections here. Uh, and I used the, the new Nisi Jet Pro system, a magnetic filter system that I used uh, on the wide angle, super easy to use. And I often use this, this polarizer in the forest to work with reflection and also to enhance or decrease a little bit the, the, the light hitting the leaves. You get very deep color. Um, you can see how that looks. 
and it's very tiny it's circular and magnetic you can easily stack filters and this this new filter system by nisi it works uh, very great so i use this polarizer a lot in the forest to quickly attach it or sometimes it's just all the time attached to my lens continuing here in the forest finding the, the, the only the little bit of autumn colors and these are quite straightforward shots again ISO 200 on the tripod I'm looking for this autumn colors in the darkness uh, because you know more and more autumn colors are starting to come in the Dutch forest we are usually a little bit late but you know we have some beautiful autumn in our forest and then um, I started to focus on, 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 the, on the smaller things so I, I found this mushroom this, uh, kind of like a coral reef it looks like this mushroom and i started to photograph it a little bit wide with uh, the the, the 2870 f2 here at f2 with a beautiful bokeh so that it looks like this mushroom is in this this bigger for fairy tale forest or even underwater because it looks like a coral reef uh, i i really like the shot and again handheld for these close-ups with this focus magnify trick i should say uh, ISO 800 here, 1 to 100 of a second. And then I put the macro lens on it to, to, to take a super close up and look how amazing that looks. Uh, ISO 400, 1 50th of a second. This was from a, from a tripod though, uh, to super carefully pick the right focus uh, on this, uh, this, this mushroom. And, and here are some more shots of these mushrooms. And again, using the camera on the ground for this mushroom and flipping the screen up like that very handy to use like that and uh, here f2 all wide open so you can see a little bit the bokeh how beautiful it is on this 2870 lens it almost looks like a macro sometimes and uh, here this one as well i really like the shot with a beautiful bokeh even going from below the mushroom so again need to get very low and then because this camera has the focus stacking obviously and it does it very fast uh, I want to show you some shots that I took uh, with the, 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 the mushrooms with focus stacking because I started to create a photo series um, last year actually where I see the mushrooms in the landscape with a lot of depth and I really like to shoot but it takes some complicated techniques one the focus stacking that the camera has to do but also combining the shots later and sometimes it takes some effort to get it uh, perfect but let me show you some shots here uh, this is the first one where we see that, that fairy tale forest in the fog and then the tiny mushrooms in the foreground. So uh, using F14 often to get a big depth of field, get close to the mushrooms and then, um, you know, let the camera run the focus stack through the scene. This is the first one. It uh, doesn't need that much shots. The second one here getting uh, further, a little bit further away and then zooming in more. Uh, this bunch of mushrooms took much more because the depth of field, you know, was more difficult, took much more shots to take to get everything in focus. So here ISO 250, uh, F14 and let the camera focus stack. Yeah. Then this one, I really like this one as well. Not so complicated shot with its mushrooms here in the foreground. Uh, absolutely uh, beautiful with that, that fairy tale forest in the background. But now we come to my favorite mushroom uh, shot of this year so far. Uh, this one with this, what's it called in Dutch? It's porcelain mushrooms kind of, and you get below them and then you see all the, the structure from below the mushroom and the light hitting through. And I really like this composition with the reflection of the forest, all the autumn leaves, and then on the right side, those, those, those kind of glowing mushrooms. And I love these mushrooms. And I took uh, this shot with this uh, same technique. Um, here you can see a, a photo of how, how it looks. And I'm all the way on the ground, lower than the mushrooms itself, not even on the tripod, but I'm using the tripod leg kind of to, to hold the camera a little bit up. Huh? Uh, and, 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 and I saw much more of this, this mushrooms that I really like. And I also took some you know, abstract shots uh, of them, uh, starting with this one, you can see from the tripod. Uh, this little drops I saw at the bottom. So this is just a single shot from the tripod uh, at F22 to get still quite some depth of field because I wanted to see the drops in the background as well. And then the next shot I really, really like as well. I took a focus stack with the macro lens 
uh, of multiple layers of this porcelain uh, mushrooms. You can see here the kind of overlay and it looks really artsy and I really love this shot. And this shot took really like 30 shots, a macro focus stack and then uh, combine them. Absolutely spectacular. Manually focus stacking, impossible to do that, but with a, with a camera that can do the focus stacking automatically, it's uh, not that uh, difficult to do in the field. You just need some time in post-processing to combine all the shots. Next session, cityscapes near my house, the city of Amersfoort, uh, with this beautiful medieval gate that we start with. It was a beautiful sunrise, and here you see it was still dark, and I use again the 2870 here at 28 millimeter, wide open at f2, because you see this foam in the water, and it, it was moving a bit, and I wanted the short shutter speed, so I did it wide open. And I have no problem using this lens wide open because it's a sharp lens. Then I want to say something about the dynamic range of this camera, which is, you know, if you know Sony cameras, the dynamic range is great. And this camera is, of course, no difference. Um, I am used to shooting quite dark. I expose for the highlights a lot so that I don't blow them out. And the Sony shadows, I can easily pull them up without much noise. So here, we see a shot uh, that I took with a 7200 and I underexposed it a lot also for the street lights uh, to not blow them out. This is the original photo uh, ISO 200 from the tripod. It was still quite dark. And here we see the photo after editing. So you see I pulled up the shadows, uh, the street lights are not blown out and the frame is beautifully balanced. Beautiful sky we had here, beautiful medieval gate of Amersfoort, uh, my hometown, yeah? I was born there and I live there now, okay? So this was shot at F8 and let's look at a very tight crop and you see all this uh, stones, a lot of detail also in the logo. Uh, the camera has very high megapixel, allows for easy cropping and great detail basically. So when the sun was up, I continued to walk a little bit. Here we have the beautiful church tower. It was again foggy, lots of foggy days uh, this, this week's and beautiful autumn colors. And this dove, he sat there and I was like, oh, that's the perfect position, the perfect position. He sat there uh, with the tower and with the autumn colors. I really, really like this shot. I walked a little bit more. I saw the scene that the sun came up, casting this golden light and this really beautiful atmosphere in the streets. And I know this amazing street. I went there when the light just came and I saw this woman walking here with her dog. I found this really, really beautiful scene. Then I want to show you one more session that really shows the speed of this camera and how it performs with, well, wildlife. Eh? And I say not really wildlife because for this session, I went to a farm near my house, again near my house, this is starting to be a little bit funny, but yeah, a farm, and they hold a lot of special birds. And it's important to note that these birds have a good life and almost all of them are from a young age uh, being brought to this farm because they either, you know, had a little injury or they were abandoned by uh, their mother uh, and they, they basically couldn't survive on their own. Yeah, so uh, here at the farm, they take care of them and they do these photo sessions or workshops uh, or, or something. And they just fly around uh, freely. Of course, not all the time, but they fly around freely and they're being trained by uh, Gerrit and Bettine, which are great people taking great care of these birds, really care about these birds. Uh, I felt that I needed to say this first uh, because otherwise I will get comments like, oh, this is very bad. What happening here? No, these birds are being treated here very nice so let's get started the first uh, photo of this beautiful falcon little falcon here and you see i was a little bit uh, further behind and all of these sh shots i'm going to show you they were taken with the 300 f28 and and the bird was a little bit further away here i took the shot which is decent but if we look uh, at the crop so here is a crop of this photo which still has decent amount of resolution left um you can see the, the amazing detail and how you can crop with this 50 megapixels. So first I'm gonna show you some portraits 
and the eye autofocus of this thing is absolutely great and you can set it to birds you can set it to animal but you can set it now also to auto and the camera will automatically detect what you are shooting so that way you don't have to switch it all the time anymore it's a nice little detail that the camera has but the eye autofocus almost always nails the eye here especially when the birds are sitting still yeah so here we had this cute little owl with autumn colors sitting in this tree uh, a very easy shot for this camera beautiful bokeh of the 300 f 2.8 uh, and here is a slightly different owl and it's sitting a little bit in between the leaves and still the camera has absolutely no issue finding the eyes through the leaves of the bird uh, no problem at all yeah i was standing here a little bit closer to that tree then there were also uh, some birds that were just in the in the water at the farm they, they had a little lake there and uh, this is just uh, local birds that come there for for a swim or for some food uh, and um, uh, found this beautiful mandarin ducks uh, amazing colors and i spent some time just photographing them swimming in the lake and while they are moving and moving and moving camera absolutely no problem keeping the focus keeping the track on the eye uh, and it's important to say that also in video now it has the subject tracking so uh, uh, taking a video handheld of these birds absolutely no problem and you can shoot in 120p 100p it also shoots 8k yeah so video wise absolutely great and uh, one thing to note about the video as well is that you can apply the rack 709 lat on your s lock uh, shooting so that you can actually see what's going on with the color which i find a very handy tool that i'm using right now on this camera in front of me with the zv e1 uh, I use that all the time and I'm super happy to see that in the A1 as well. Yeah, little side note about the video, absolutely great. Uh, then here, some other Mandarin duck, yeah? Yeah, or I, I don't know, I think it's not called the Mandarin duck actually, this one, but it looks a little bit similar, but uh, yeah, shooting some, some ducks in the pond. And then uh, I found this uh, little robin, uh, was also just flying around there at the farm and it sat on some uh, branches with autumn colors and even with all the branches going on uh, the camera uh, quickly found the bird and even its eye to uh, to, to it locked on it to to, to, to shoot here so one uh, one shot i really like of that little robin with the autumn colors uh, continuing with some portraits and then flying birds so this this i don't know the name of this owl but looked like a very lazy face i found this one of the most beautiful owls uh, that i saw uh, beautiful I focused here on the portrait so you can see it's ISO 4000 uh, at f11 why I used f11 because I wanted the whole face almost the whole face uh, sharp I wanted as much sharpness as possible there so I shot it on f11 but that did mean I had to use a high ISO because it was uh, you know it was a gloomy day not sunny not so much light but absolutely no problem and then I did a crop uh, of only the face, very expressive face, uh, lots of wisdom in the face that I really like. I really like this shot of this owl. Very, very beautiful. Then the next owl that I also took some, some flying photos of, here you see him sitting here on the branch, uh, and here we have a photo in flight. And what is very cool, look at this photo, how amazing is that? The eye is in focus in between the depth of the wings so it caught the eye in flight and i can tell you this is very difficult for a camera to do and here you can see the the original shot actually the the, the owl was flying very fast so my 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 skills were not that good i'm not a wildlife photographer so my framing was not great uh, this was an original shot but you can see with the cropping the high megapixel and of course the great eye detection that we can see here in the crop I managed to get that beautiful shot out of it that I absolutely love, yeah? So continuing a little bit with the flying of this owl, um, now this camera also has the pre-capture function, like the A9 III. So what you can do is uh, set pre-capture on or configure it with a custom button, turn it on and it will capture a few seconds when you already have pressed the shutter button for the auto um for the autofocus so when you start to autofocus it already 
records those frames and only when you actually press it in full it will save those frames so if nothing happens you know if nothing if nothing happens it will not save these photos okay so that makes sure when you're waiting for a bird to fly from something you can actually half press it and then you're always a little bit too late when it starts to fly because it's super fast but not when you have pre-capture on because that way you have a few seconds before it actually takes off that it also captures in that way pre-capture absolutely great so capture here here we see six shots of this owl here uh, in a sequence the 30 frames per second and every frame the eye is in focus uh, uh, during the flight so not always 100 percent but i would say 90 percent is uh, actually Focusing on eye, you see, I'm shooting on f2.8, yeah? Uh, also another sequence, here you see Gerard, when actually the, uh, the owl is coming towards us in the sequence, and you see here the owl is getting some food, the, the owl is coming towards us, and again, all the frames, the uh, focus is locked on the eyes, even when it's coming towards us. Uh, very impressive, yeah? So here are some other results, uh, flying birds. Flying birds, very easy to capture with this camera, with the speed and the autofocus. However, the A9 III is the absolute winner for capturing birds with its 120 frames per second. This is like a cheat code for wildlife and sports as well. Uh, that is something that this camera does not have, but for that you have to get the A9 III because uh, try it that's just yeah that's just cheating okay but still with this camera here a uh, beautiful uh, bird again with the wings i really like this shot and actually this is one of my favorites of this uh, brown eagle uh, and I, I i had a composition with only its face eyes in focus and it was flying over the water but my my composition was was horrible and it was coming you know too close to me so i couldn't capture the full wings so this is the original shot that you know uh, by itself is a bad shot but when i cropped it and did some uh, editing i came out with this shot which i actually really really like okay so some points about the bird session what i talked about pre-capture this camera has now absolutely great you will never miss a moment of course again the 50 megapixel great for cropping in wildlife if your composition is not perfect which almost always happens to me i'm a bad wildlife photographer basically uh, then um, the animal eye autofocus is absolutely great absolutely great uh, the autofocus in general the detection is great and also in video the subject detection uh, the autofocus uh, on the animals is absolutely great in video so you uh, see some shots from um, uh, one to, uh, 100p um, slow motion very nice the, the 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 camera doesn't lose autofocus the same with people people even easier for this camera here we have a little bonus shot of my little daughter now 16 months old walking towards me in slow motion uh, also here with falling leaves and uh, the 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 autofocus constantly locked on the eyes absolutely no problem so that kind of brings us to the end of this video i showed you some different use cases it's really up to you if you think this camera is worth the upgrade i don't know which camera you have i have my a7r5 but after having used this camera for a couple of weeks i can tell you that yeah, kind of want this camera because of all this, especially, you know, that the, the, the speed is great and the autofocus with the speed allows me to capture more things. For only landscapes, I don't really need it. My A7R5 is great for that. But if I want to capture much more and also the video now, the video functions, it has also 8K uh, using the log uh, profile with the Rec. 709 LUT uh, applied to it. So that i can see the colors here yeah that's also a great function that i would like to see in my a7r5 as well yeah i like the body i really like the camera but does it justify the price that's what you have to ask yourself actually i don't know uh, when making this video i don't know the price of this camera but surely it's gonna be expensive and uh, you have to think yourself especially if you already own the a1 
are you gonna upgrade or not? The image quality is not so much better. The rest is tons better, is much better. So it's really up to you. I think, yeah, it's gonna be a difficult choice for, for, for some of you. I, I have to return this camera to Sony. Sony is not giving it to me, but uh, oof, I might have to talk to Sony to arrange something. Well, hope you really liked the video. Hope you liked the content. Uh, and my way of presenting this new piece of gear. And uh, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment. Um, if you like my work, uh, my book, I mentioned it in the beginning of the video, uh, check it out on beautyofthenetherlands.com. Uh, my editing course as well, if you like the, the processing in, in these photos. And uh, well, then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.